Join me in making a mini folder from complete scrap and junk. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. So this exercise is for scrap busting. So if you have lots of little pieces, if you have a tray full of scraps and stuff, things that you are now looking at and it's overflowing, maybe you've got those things that you just don't know what to do with. They're, they've been sitting here for weeks, they're not being added into a project and now I think that this is a time to just add them all in. And this year I would like to throw myself into the Defema Ember project but but it will be a small scale back version and I'm just going to have a little go quietly. I won't be able to do a video of all of the prompts but I will do, do a roundup of the project so that you can see how I'm getting on and hopefully it will give you inspiration along the way. So in front of me you can see I've got some packaging, I've got a little bit of plain fabric, I've got a strip of card which is sandwiched together and glued. This is quite a thick sturdy card, I think it's two inches and that is going to be a spine. I'm going to try and make a folder as suggested by the girls for Defemeremba this year and uh, I know that we can do anything we want and there are no rules to junk journaling whatsoever but I do like the challenge of making a folder because I've not done one before. But my cover is going to be a soft cover with a hard spine. I'm going to use these binder ring closures and I've got this which is cereal packaging glued together in three layers and that is going to be my spine. What I am going to be doing is gluing down all my scraps and making a masterboard cover for the front of my journal. The introduction, or maybe no introduction needed this year, is the little character Effie, and that comes from the word ephemera. So Effie is the little ephemera. He's not a mouse, he's not a hamster, he's not really anything. He's his own little person. He can be whatever you want him to be. So with that in mind, I'm taking the energy of this Effie character who likes to collect things, who likes to forage and rummage and keep things uh, and squirrel them away and that is definitely, I think, the essence of a junk journaler and what we like to do. We like to find the value in little pieces of things and we like to keep them as a special little memento of that moment when we found it and that is no different to me. Here I'm looking at an old rusty washer which I picked up on a walk. This is just the stuff in front of me. I've got this rusty closure here which I want to use in a project. They're interesting, they're rusty, they're decaying, they're rotting. It's all that time of year where we're looking at autumn and the turn of the seasons. Things are dying back. They are just clearing themselves away in order to make way for the new growth of the new year. So I think my project needs to reflect that, the turn of the season and clearing up the scraps. I want to make a scruffy grungy little journal and I want to put all of my scraps in it and clear them away and ultimately at the end of it I'll come out with something that I love and I'm happy with. Yeah. While Effie, our ephemera friend, is going to come and feature in the journal I'm not going to have him as a main focus throughout each project. I'm going to use images from the freebie for the ephemera ember this month and this comes from Barbara 49 dragonflies this comes from her coffee shop page so you would uh, so you can download this one for free with the ocean and it comes with the prompt list so the prompt list this is the prompt list here all very cool there are 16 prompts 16 ideas that you could make here you can dip in you can do some of it you can do none of it you can follow along you can make one thing two things none no things some of these prompts are quite challenging but I'm going to try and simplify them as best I can. And one of the things I'm going to do to try and simplify things is to make my folder smaller. That is going to make me feel like I haven't got as much to do. If it's a great big page that can be a bit daunting. So this Amazon packaging was a bag that came through and it's like that, that's how it is. I've just cut the end off and then on this side, when I started to rip off the packaging label, it took off some of this. And inside is little blobs of foam. So it's a padded packaging and that's what I'm using. Also, this image is printed out onto printable canvas on my printer. So that is fabric and it's quite strong and thick. This side is from Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and this side is from Louise Heinzel and I love them both 
and I'm just not sure, but this side did print out onto the more canvas uh, feel to the fabric. But I'm now thinking that this is sort of the colour mood that I probably want to go with. I'm very inspired by the beach. The reason I've got this printed on both sides is because I originally was thinking about an idea of having a pocket or having something and turning it into something but I've changed my mind and now I think that this is just going to add strength to the inside cover of my so jam. So with this in mind I had a look at the prompt list and I thought if this is Effie's schedule and not ours what would it look like? Would it look as clean and as pristine as this? And I thought no it wouldn't. I think Effie's schedule would look more like this. So this is what we've got. This is Effie's schedule. Now that's good for Effie because I don't think I can achieve all of that. It's not my schedule. It's Effie's so therefore I'm not going to get all of it done because it's December. It's the it's busiest month and we've got a lot going on in our family at the moment so I cannot be present for all of this but I want to take part in some of it and I have been so this is what I've done so for the first weekend I felt that Effie went fishing and then the second weekend I felt that he was painting and being quiet so this is going to become fun things in the Defemerembe journal and of course he's on a secret mission over the 15th to the 17th and then the 22nd to the 24th I think after all of this he'll probably enjoy sleeping and hibernating so that's what I've got so these are going to become the first two pages in this binder journal. So I'm taking the padded envelope and I'm going to reduce the size by just cutting off those edges. That is going to open it up. I'm sticking the two pieces together so I hide any of the black marks and any of those packaging labels. I've now got a nice blank surface to work on. And now I'm going to get lost in my glue and my scraps. I'm going to speed this bit up for you because it will take some time to put this all together and for me to consider all the little pieces. But just so that you can see the starting point, it is this. This is my pile of stuff. Um, I've got plenty more where that came from and I am surrounded by some very peculiar things such as um, wet wipes that I have used to mop up ink but they actually appear to be in the colourway that I'm wanting to work with which we've got the green, we've got the blue from this little creature that has been developed by Louise Heinzel and Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. So I'm going to use this on the inside and I want those colour tones reflected on the outside and I've got to pull in that sort of colourway into my collage here as I go through all the things. I've got some vintage bits and fabric scraps. I've got some fabric trims and bits and pieces and all this sort of stuff and it is just everywhere. So I'm going to tether some of it down and see if we can't make something really interesting. Okay, so this is where I'm at so far. Lots of scraps all stuck down onto the page. Everything's staying on with the strength of the stick glue, but I am going to be sewing everything over the top. What I want to do is just imagine that this is still only one layer and I want to carry on. So where I've got big blocks of colour, I'm now looking to bring in vintage papers, some of the more interesting pieces that I have, and they will come and live um, on the top. So I've got bits there that that is this really really old vintage paper and it's just a nice find. So I'm just picking up scraps of fabric, things that I would have used over the years, uh, things that are important or special to me. This is a scrap of fabric from my daughter's top when she was very very small. I made something else out of it and this was just a remnant so 
all of these things are lovely and special. Everything has a meaning. And I think if you've got things like that from your life or surplus things from projects that you remember doing, it's a really nice way to just put things down in a scruffy collage, but everything have its own little meaning. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking little pieces and um, building them in but I'm looking for the colour. I'm thinking about autumn. I've got this lovely orange colour there and that's just the nice fall colours, bringing that into places and uh, considering where I want to put it, maybe overlapping, but breaking up blocks of colour. So we haven't got a great big strip of green there. Now we've got something to, and the pink. And so just tying that in brings the browns in, the pinks in, and then now we've got an orange that may or may not go there. What I'm doing is I'm going to separate the two uh, so they become their own panels. So I will be cutting down and I think I'll be working on them individually. Now I've separated the panels, I can work on them individually and this will be the centre piece which will be my spine. And we'll come to that in a minute because we've got to look at how we're going to attach the rings. I need three rings for this. And I've been playing around with the idea of linking them through a card. So this is my play one. Here. So I've had a look with the two distances here and this second one looks like it's going through a bit much and it is hanging out quite substantially at the back there. So I think that those two holes, the spacing there is too wide, whereas this one looks like it's going to be the winning distance because it will allow the ring binder to open for pages to be inserted in and to stay put. And I think it's just worthwhile playing with it to get it right, but that is an inch apart. Two and a half centimetres what I think is going to be a good idea is to come in roughly around an inch mark on either end. To measure this, we're looking at five and a half, so I want to come in and be in the middle around here, around two and three quarters, about that. I'm just using washi tape to secure this in and then I can move it down and punch them exactly where I want them. Oh, that's the wrong one, not that one. I've punched through the wrong one, hang on. So I've punched through the wrong one, but it doesn't matter. We're covering it up anyway. Punched through. Okay, we had a little bit of a hiccup because I punched through the wrong hole, but it doesn't matter at this point, as long as we... Oh, I've put them completely in the wrong place now. Um, does that matter? Yes, it does. <laughs> Yes, it does matter. Right, try again. We're going for lots of holes. <laughs> We've got to just remember which ones are the right ones. Okay, we're clearing the little punches out of this and try again, get it right. Okay, let's look at it now. Okay, so it's that isn't brilliant, is it? Because I've just made that not very strong. Okay, I'm going to repair my mistake with a bit of fabric tape. And I'm just going to strengthen the hole there by wrapping that around. So I'm just using some fabric tape. This is from Tim Holtz. I'm going to add it over the holes so I know that they are the ones not to use. <laughs> and repairing this, which is quite an interesting idea because it's very pretty. And this is the bit that we won't see because we're going to be covering it up. But it is a nice strong canvas tape and I'm using that. So we could have used another piece of card, anything really. But uh, just so for the video, we can see that we've got those holes and those are the correct ones. And then we've got to get this hinge piece through to the other side. And uh, I think I better just do it up and then just feed it through. OK, so that is the mock-up of the ring binding. I'm quite pleased with it because it looks lovely and homemade, slightly different. I've got everything laid out. 
I'm feeling a bit more inspired now that I've figured out how the binding rings are going to work. So I'm just adding in a few more focal pieces, things that I've got like this torn mushroom image here. I think that that can come and live down here somewhere and just bring a pop of colour over this side, bring that red in, that sort of autumn vibe. And I think then I've also found these lovely cutouts from an old vintage botanical book. And I think something like that would be nice to come in on the front. And then I want to sew over it like an old quilt. So lace, trim, bits of fabric, little bits of metal, anything, anything that we salvage, anything that you can find, foraged finds, things that you may pick up on your walk, all of those sort of things that Effie might find uh, just as much as I find them and that is what it means to me. I'm leaving a gap here at the edge because I will be pulling over some fabrics. I'm just finding little things that have come from past projects so I'm adding them in now because it makes it make more sense. There's a nice L shape appearing here. We'll have binding there and also I quite like to use this has been floating around the craft room for absolutely weeks. Um, so it's something that I dyed with madder root earlier on in the year back in April and it's a beautiful colour and I think that it would just be good to bring it in here and then maybe that's where I could put the title of what this is. A lot of it will look very different once it's been sewn down and it will almost become a little bit flatter but you can see it's a very three-dimensional piece at the moment. Well, let's just have that there, a little starfish, why not? That's really nice and then that all seems to make sense, a little bit of a beach theme coming in. Ah, oh, this is coming together now guys, I'm really pleased. This is all just from a load of old scrap in here, it's just the stuff that's down at the bottom, you know, things like that, that's nice, let's have that. A little bit of spangle, yes, why not? And, um, and a button. That's an interesting button. So the scrap tray is the key to everything. If you have a scrap tray and you build to it and you keep adding to it, anytime you're sitting down and you're creating something, you create a scrap, you look at the scrap and you think, has that got some worth? Can I make something out of that? Could I add a stamp? Would that become a label? Is that anything interesting? And the answer of course is yes, and in it goes to the scrap tray. The next time when we come to look at a project such as this and we want such a scrap as this piece of brown and we can say bring it on, bring it into the project and we can add it. And that is how a scrap tray works. My tray is really shallow. I think I could probably go a bit deeper and I will make one I think next year that's something a little bit more in keeping. This one's getting very scruffy and it's just a paint palette. But the more I have in it, the more overwhelming it becomes so I really try to keep it at that and and if it overflows then that is the reason I have to I have to make something just sewing this button on with the red thread that was already waiting from a previous project all ready to go we just add a bit of glue there and then stick something over it to stop that coming away. Right, now I'm going to use some parcel tape and I'm just going to connect those two together, making sure I've got a roughly equal distance between the two panels. I'm going to add down my tape. Just adding a few bits of tape here, really messy, not paying any attention to neatness here at all. And then I'm flipping it over turning up those pieces or turning them in and then I'm just going to do the same on the inside. Okay, starting to look a little bit more interesting now. So that's going to be the folder. ta -da! Okay, so on the inside I'm going to rip this fabric in half here and this is going to be the part of the panel which I sew onto to help stabilise but also to bring in a little fray and an overhang for the inside of the project so I'm adding that. Some more glue and we're going to add in this. 
piece here. I've got some eco dye fabric here. This came from a bit of an experiment earlier on in the year using turmeric and rust. So I'm going to have that, I think, on the spine. Uh, it's just a scrap piece. Just going to use the stick glue again to glue this down. Then I'm going to wait for it to dry and then I'm going to sew the whole thing together. It's hard to say which side I want to use but um, I might even want to use both. Just as a nod to both of the girls hosting Defemerenda this year and say a big thank you. I think we'll just see what we like. So we've got the nice flowers on this side. And we could have the beach theme there and then we could bring something in the middle. So I think that that's how it's going to look on the inside. Let's just see if that looks as good as I think it might. Oh, a button. Well, that's better. How about that? Get them up there. And then the nightingale over here, guys. Yes. Okay, I've also found this little sewing button um, scrap as well, so that was a good find. All right, let's just sew this down any way that feels right when I get to the sewing machine. And here we have it, back from the sewing machine and looking really good. I've managed to get the rings in there. I'm very pleased I practiced that before, so they've gone in there and then looking quite flush, flush to the book, and this is the back and then we open it out. So that's how I was able to pass it through the sewing machine and I've quilted the two pieces together. I've glued down the cotton fabric with the eco dye and there you can see all the little pieces. I've used a copper thread. I've just used basic quilting techniques to tether together the three pieces. So by definition, a quilted piece is three layers sewn together. We've got the top layer, which is paper, scraps and fabric. We've got the middle layer, which was our padded packaging bag. And, and again, I've stuck this piece down with glue, pierced holes in it, just using my awl. So that was just to put, put the rings into the existing holes that I'd already punched. And then I've glued down these pieces. I was going to stick the whole thing down and then I thought, hold on, this is defemeremba and we need to be doing things differently. So to stick that down would be very usual and, and what I would do. And I thought I've got two options. I can either glue down this side and this side and create a pocket, but I've done that quite a bit recently in other journals. So I have left it free and this is the result. We can now roll this back. We keep the lovely image here from Louisa Heinzel. I've now got a nice little slot to put my scraps, my spare papers and at the moment the prompt list. But what I like about it is I can still see the sewing of the inner cover of my journal and where I have sewn on these embellished pieces, as you can see here, I hope you can, I've put Defemeremba and then put a little sewed piece and a charm here and then that's why I have covered that up but if I hadn't have made the mistake when I was punching this hole and picked up that tape to make a repair I wouldn't have come up with the idea to hide the paper fasteners here and also the sewing thread at the back and I love that I love that look I think that's really nice I might even put another one there just to balance it out but I think it's really fun and then of course it becomes a little tough. So we've got this really nice serene scene that just promotes what I say here. It reminds you to slow down, calm down, come to your journal and just work on it. And then we've got this idea here where we can store paper. So I've even incorporated this rusty file holder that I wanted to use somewhere in a project. And then if I move these pieces along, I'm able to lift that up, punch my pieces and I can add things in there. So whether that's scrap paper, which I think is my thought at the moment, or whether that's another piece of ephemera, which is more interesting, I've got the options. So I was really, really pleased and it's all hidden. 
and that just shuts like that keeps it nice and neat nice and flat I've added that in there just in case the rust uh, marked the fabric or anything and it's all hidden away so it's just really neat just a really nice idea and I'm really pleased with it I've left the threads loose and they are great and then what I'm going to do to just bind it is I've got one of these wire clips that I acquired a while ago and, and that is just going to live there and keep everything in place like a really nice folder and this folder will be for all my ideas throughout the next month or so and I was very excited to make the journal probably more excited to make the journal than I was the ephemera pieces that go into it using the prompts provided however I have got a few that I've been doing in the background and this is what I've got to add to my journal as it is at the moment so I want to put in my altered prompt list because I think that it's really fun with the added labels here and I have got a little print out of the labels I've I've made quite a few I've made a whole sheet of all different ones so if you'd like to check that out I've got a freebie on my coffee shop page and the link for that is below you can go and help yourself if you like the idea of this or you could just use these labels elsewhere and um, if you were inspired and wanted to have a go with Defemera Ember you might like to use them throughout the pieces as just some extra little ideas of what this character Effie could be doing for those of you who have been kind enough to make it through to this part of the video here's the little free be that I'm offering with the labels that you can tear out and then add to your own projects and they've just got a little idea that it could come from the little ephemera friend Effie and uh, let's just have a look at this so I was layering them up like clusters and then adding some sewing and then I've got him punched out there which came from Louise Heinzel's website she has freebies there of the little character that you can print out and the prompt list as well so there we go you can have a look at that and then if you'd like to do something similar on the prompt card you could add what you think he might be doing during those times when he is having a break and then it just made it more interesting I thought for the prompt cards to come in the journal. So help yourself to that from my coffee shop and the link is below and then I've got this that I made in a previous project so if you'd like to see how I made this pop-up bag this was for build a journal for our October project so the first prompt on the list was opening and I thought that this would fit nicely with that even though I've made it ahead of time I think that it's lovely because it comes with the mushrooms and the mushrooms if you watch the girls channel is very much heavily featured in their digital kits and artwork and I just thought this is lovely. These mushroom images come from Klee Black Creations and her link is below as well if you like the idea of the little houses where I think you know Effie could live. So I have this is my nod to Effie this is probably the only one I shall do um, but he lives in here in this little mushroom village house so there we go he's all in there that's Effie's little woods and that's where he's going to be and that is opening so that was the first prompt on the list and then he went fishing which is fine I like to go fishing too although I keep an aquarium and look after my fish the next one is butterfly and three torn things and I have been looking and I have this piece which I've got um, it's a torn piece of paper it's got a bit of torn book page which is some Japanese text it's got two pieces of fabric torn on there and then all it wants is a butterfly so I was having a look in my scraps and I thought well I've got a scrap a torn scrap of um, some baked paper which had some nice gold splats and things on it so I thought this could be a really rustic topper to something and then I also found a butterfly and the butterfly was slightly torn so I had to reject it from another project and I thought well there we go then that is just brilliant and it's going to sort of appear like that and I thought what I'll do is I'll just sew down the middle bit there I've got some loose thread over at the sewing machine which is this copper thread that I've just been using so I shall make a little antenna and that will fulfill that prompt number four and now I've got this I've just sewn the butterfly on and then I've put one two three lines 
lines of stitching just fanning out to hold in that scrap. What I think I'm going to do is now turn this as a nice topper piece to come and live on this scrap piece here which is just some packaging paper from a parcel and it's got some um, gesso on it and I think I've already put one of my little labels at the top and there's a bit of a stamp there so when it's in the journal these are paper clips which have been stuck down and then inside I've just put some more paper from the parcel and I've printed out Defemeremba there and so this is a little tear sheet so that I can write some notes and on the back here I've used some more of this tape to be able to hide those paper clips so I'm just using my three-in-one glue and I'm going to stick it down. There we go. And this is some silk scarf which I picked up in a charity shop and I just sort of washed it rather robustly and uh, and it has ripped and frayed and torn because it is, it is real yes. silk. And that's why that looks worn and interesting with those edges because it's just been washed a couple of times. And now I've filled what I have into the journal so far. And here we have it, so lovely soft cover coming over and I've put this one at the front here so this is the opening and I thought that's quite a nice place to store some of the things so I might put my little labels in there I've got that one stargazing and mending so I could add those if I want to and then we come over here's the first prompt list and then of course we can come over and be able to put things on the back of these cards. Now the 15th to the 17th is a secret mission and the secret mission is of course to put this journal together and see if I can catch myself up with the Defemeremba prompts and have a bit of fun. So these are going to be very scrappy, come together and just be some nice simple ideas. It's just the ideas, it doesn't need to be a finished piece because I just want this to give me some inspiration when I'm feeling like I've lost my mojo or I'm trying to tackle a problem and I just don't know what. Sometimes looking at these journals, coming back to it, being reminded of the inspiration and the ideas, working in different colours as well, bringing in the blues and greens, that's really nice. It's a nice colour palette to work with, I'm really pleased. And I will continue to do a bit more and then I've got blank space here and it's just been fun to play so there's foraging there and that could be a little entry into what sort of things have been found on these woodland missions to go and find secret things. Oh guys this has been a lot of fun I'm very pleased to have started that. I was really excited to make this folder particularly as it's come from all the scraps and is a really true junk journal for Defemeremba. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a look at my coffee page. I've got lots of freebies including some birds as well if you wanted to do anything like this scrappy collage and then sew it through. For any sewers out there or any quilters you'll be familiar with that process and it is quite easy to do. Just running the stitching under your machine with the three layers, no problem at all, quite relaxing. And that's what it's all about. It's about relaxing, making time for you, working through some of the things, working through your scraps and finding places for the special pieces and the little nice finds and things that you might have at the bottom of a sewing box or a, the back of a drawer and um, special pieces of fabric or lace or trim, anything that's come off from a part project that you now find you can add it in and enjoy it over again. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope to see you on my next video very soon and I will see if I can put together a few more things for this journal. So do have a look at my playlist. There's a whole wealth of tutorials and other videos for you to explore. But above everything else guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.